What's up, folks? Welcome back to The Pulse. My name is Matt. This is Crypto Heartbeat. I, I constantly want to remind you, yesterday we talked about um, what's at stake. And I want you to understand what's at stake. How low can you go? It really actually doesn't matter how low you can go. You have to understand that this is a time of unrest. You know, we talk about kind of bull markets, bear markets. Nothing happens in a vacuum. Everything happens together, right? There, there's impact to these things. And I would say, I follow a guy named Martin Armstrong, and I would say that uh, consumer or economic confidence is the key of all things, right? And so let's talk about that. I talk about confidence a lot. Why are you in Hex? Why are you in Pulse and Pulse X? Why are you following this stuff? Do you think because it's terrible and you think it's going to go to zero? No because you have confidence, right? In a community of people. Why do I do what I do? Because I wanna build confidence. I wanna build community. I want to add more value to this thing because that helps everyone. But this fundamental concept of what creates value, it's precious. And people don't realize how precious it is because as soon as you lose confidence in something, people run. You know, they call a run on the bank. You know what that means? I know you know what that means. People don't have confidence that the bank's the place to keep the money. Look at Luna. It's a great example. You lose confidence in something, right? And so it's a fragile and it is a sensitive and it is a, fra yeah, it's, it's precious. And you need to understand that. And, you know, I think a lot of people in their hubris and confidence thinks that, you know, nothing ever can fail. Everything's up and to the right until it's not. I want you to understand what's really going on, though, and why Richard Hart deserves some grace from us. There is not an advocate in the world right now that has the ability to create something to unlock such resources in a independent, freedom-loving, sovereignty-building way. This is critical. And this isn't critical for Wen Lambo. This is critical for the world. That's why we're going to be coupling this with the Davos conversation today. I want you to understand something that's happening. This, this is a battle between good and evil. I'm 100% you know, confirmed, confident of that. And here's what I mean. Authoritarianism is on the, authoritarianism is on the rise, and we've seen this, okay? We've experienced this pandemic. We've experienced the social engineers coming out in force. We've seen people pitting one group against another, which is classic Marxism, right? Class warfare. Divide and conquer. We've seen a political party that used to be for the middle class become not for the middle class. We've seen massive changes in politics. And we've also seen massive encroachment when it comes to personal independence and sovereignty. You have to understand something really, really, really important. The hex price is, is fine, but do not get caught up in it. And it's not because hex is going to be $100. I, I'm not, that's not what I'm advocating for. The most important thing that happens is this layer one under the leadership of Richard Hart gets launched, in my opinion. There's a big difference between an ERC-20 token on Ethereum and an entirely new layer one blockchain. You can't build much on top of an ERC-20. You can build a tremendous amount on top of a layer one. This layer one that Richard's building is, it's got his leadership and his fingerprints on it. And what is he about? He said this very, very clearly. He's been an advocate for immutability. No admin keys, no counterparty risk, no KYC, right? He is concerned about your personal sovereignty and his too. I mean, when he wins, we win. But who out there, point to another founder who is not in bed with the elites, who wants to build something that frees the captives. And who are the captives? That's you and me. Debt slavery, folks. There are all kinds of different forms of slavery in this world right? We've got child sex trafficking. We've got all kinds of different types of uh, different slavery that, that happens. But one of the biggest ones out there is this economic slavery. 
And this is an opportunity that we have to be freed from that. And it's not just about, yeah, I sacked for this and I'm going to be rich. This is a tool. This is infrastructure for the next big thing. And I really, truly believe things are going to get much, 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 much more difficult. And why do I know that? Well, obviously the basic things like inflation, certainly. But the elites are emboldened. And the CBDCs, which is the central bank digital currencies, that are essentially going to be rolled out on um, Ripple, right? So the, the, when you think about the, the the blockchain that they have, right, the infrastructure that they have, they've partnered because of the SEC uh, lawsuit. They partnered, and it's on their website. This is not anything new. You can go to their website and see that they are providing the infrastructure for these central bank digital currencies. And why do they want them? Because they don't want to, you to use money or store of value or anything that they don't have control of. How low can they go? They are going as low as possible. This is called hitting below the belt. But it's all a race. We need the Pulse Chain to launch because that infrastructure is, to me, digital freedom. Digital freedom. The future of the blockchain in my opinion, is the tokenization of communities. Hexagons, it means more than an ERC-20 token. It means a lot more. We've built digital countries. This is New Hexaco. And there will be so many more that are built. But at the end of the day, what does it do? Does it increase your sovereignty and your freedom, your self-reliance, uh, self-determination? Is this something that helps empower you or is it something that helps track you and help others? You know, because the, the lie, and this is why it's so relevant, the Davos, you know, this World Economic Forum meetings happening right now, is all of these social engineers. See, when, is a, when a man is ruled from within, he does not have to be ruled from without. And in my opinion, the godless in our society believe that we we crawled out of some ooze, we turned into a monkey, and then we started coding Python. That's what they believe. They believe that over millions of millions of years, we just evolved into this. And when you believe that, you believe that there's nothing after this. That's what's called godlessness, right? And so what is your god? Your god is money. This is a big problem. It says very clearly you can't serve God and money. Your God is money. And this is the best it's going to get. If you're godless, right, you don't believe that there's anything next. When the lights go out, it's over. Then you're going to do everything you can to get yours. And if you find yourself in a position of power, you want to maintain it. You don't want to free the captives. You want to clamp down on those dummies, the deplorables, idiots, the masses, the numbers. That's you. That's what they think of you. They hate you. You're something to be managed. You know, it's interesting. There's something really powerful about understanding that you are created for a purpose and that you have value as an individual. Because when individuals that have value and value each other come together, guess what happens? Ho -ho! A renaissance. Communities built, right? Common sense. There's a lot of things that, that come from that. But without this vertically aligned ecosystem, that one man's carrying on the back of his G-Wagon doesn't happen, we got more problems in River City than you know. So we need to chill out, chillax. Why? Because if you understand what's at stake, you realize we cannot be pointing a gun at someone else's head in the foxhole. I know that there are things that people don't like. I mean, I'm a pretty conservative guy, right? Do I like the language and the Red Bull stuff and all of that? No. But I understand what's at stake and what's really going on. I'm not the guy that's out there creating a vertically aligned ecosystem with a vision for it, with the resources and the been there, done that attitude. It takes someone like him. There's a story. I don't know if you, you know about uh, leukemia. But there, the man that basically invented what is currently used for leukemia treatment for children was a big-time jackass. Nobody liked him. And you know why he was successful? Because back 
when kids were bleeding out, right? They were dying. They had leukemia and they literally would bleed. He had to get bone marrow samples from these kids and they were dying so quickly. He was the only guy and people thought he was calloused and didn't have any feelings or anything like that, but he did not give up in the most treacherous times. He would literally jab um, a needle, a thick needle, all the way into the bone marrow to get samples to be able to perfect the treatment that now is saving. Everyone knows somebody that's kid had leukemia and it's got through it. It takes people with innovation, with resolve to be able to make it happen. But if you think that it's about hex price, it's very short-sighted because there's a vision here. And this is the thing that worries me the most is that we need to hear more about this vision. Richard knows exactly what he's doing, but he's made a choice. Nothing would make me more excited than to hear the vision of what this really means and what's really at stake. Because Richard knows it. He's talked about it. And I think a lot of it's focused on him personally. But I think he understands this idea of what does it mean to free the captives. It's a big, big, big idea. And he's doing that. So everybody's getting all worked up, right? Everybody coming in the telegram, oh, no, the sky is falling. The sky is not falling. The sky is falling for a lot of other reasons, like diesel fuel and wars and baby formula and all these kind of things. Hex price, not something to worry about. We need to support Richard Hart because guess what? He who is without sin cast the first stone. And I'm looking at you and I'm looking at me. He's got the cojones to be able to put himself out there. That's a choice he makes. I'm not him. That's why I believe in freedom and in in sovereignty and why I believe about speaking your own mind. You have, when, it, when you value decentralization, when you value immutability, when you value this blockchain transparency, you have to take all of it. All of it comes with it. The good, the bad, the ugly. What is our responsibility to shine a light? In our area, right? We gravitate to these different areas, but guess what's so great about this idea of decentralization is that it frees the captives, not some of the captives, all of the captives who participate. And not everybody sees eye to eye, but that's the beauty of it, right? Mind your own business. Mind your own business. What does that mean? Not as, a in, not as an insult. Mind your own, meaning you own a business. Mind your own business. That's where the value is. And so you gravitate to the places in which you see value. This is the infrastructure of the revolution and the renaissance. And here's what's at stake. I'm going to say it again. Those that are in Davos right now, and let's take a look at who they are, because this is really interesting. These are the people who are in Davos. Let's take a look. Oh, there he is, Klaus Schwab, right? Super Bond villain right there. He's going to save us all, right? Here we go. Let's take a look at this. So this is the meeting. This is day two right now of the meeting. There's fewer participants, about 2,000 people. It's a global audience. Um, there's 583 participants from the United States, 220 from Switzerland. Interesting. Switzerland? Hmm. I guess this is economic. There's 612 CEOs in attendance. Hmm. Serum Institute, CEO of the NASDAQ, CEO of Salesforce. Hmm. Citibank, Bank of America. Oh, there's George Soros, <laughs> uh, world's wealthiest, um, Bill Gates, interesting, climate cohorts, there's 42 attendants with the word sustainability in their job title. Oh, wow, UN climate change, high level champion, New York Times international correspondents, hmm. Cloudflare, Jimmy Wales, Wikipedia, the CEO of Microsoft. These are all the people that are smarter than you. These are the people that are planning your future because in the future, you won't own anything and you'll be happy. They have no idea what's coming. We will not stand for this. We will not stand for this. So I asked the question, where do good people go? 
Richard's talking about a new a new country. What's interesting is if you were somebody that was going to build something from scratch, what would you do? A place where you run everything and you're king and everybody kisses your ring, right? You're the boss. That's what a lot of people do. I wouldn't recommend it. The idea of people being able to have the ability to make their own decisions. Because you know what? Everyone knows this, I think. Even kids know this. The best place to solve problems is locally, right? In your home, in your heart, right? Not far away. Social engineers and planners, right? These people plan. They're planning your future. My dad always used to get down on the fact that they told him how much water he could have in his toilet. He was always upset about that. But that's just an example of it, right? What light bulbs you should use. I thought, oh, dad, you're just being like, you're being ridiculous. And he always talked about a slippery slope. At the end of the day, the CBDCs want you to have a government wallet. So let me paint the picture of what the future looks like. We get a digital dollar in the United States or in your country of choice. And the government says, we're going to give you a wallet. Oh, and we're going to give you money. See, that's the big thing. They're going to tell a lot of poor people that they're going to get a special prize and they're going to buy these people because the poor people need more money than the rich people, right? And so rather than tax them, they're going to convert over to the digital dollar and say, hey, we're going to have to distribute this. But here's the thing. We're going to take your current cash and we're going to give you an equivalent. But you've got too much cash. You're too wealthy. So we're going to give you 65% of your cash on hand. But then these people don't have any cash. They've suffered and so we're going to give them 150% of their cash. You follow me? So that wallet now is tied to you, KYC to you. They know who you are. And then they're going to outlaw cash because it's dirty. That cash has viruses on it. Maybe it has monkeypox, right? You can't touch that stuff. It's so dirty. And it's all going to be bought. You're going to be bought. And so people are literally going to, they're going to accept this stuff. And of course, you come from my worldview, you're like, is it possible that there's a mark of the beast at some point in time where it will be the determining factor of whether you buy or sell? That's a whole other conversation that's for a different channel. But at the end of the day, this is what it's about. This is what it's at stake. We're basically selling our future. And it's, it's, it's a paradise for those who want to centrally plan. They want these CBDCs because they want you to have their wallet. And then they want to outlaw anything else. Because here's the thing. They see the threat of a pulse chain. They see the threat of other resources that are completely immutable, right? That are functioning outside of their purview, outside of their jurisdiction. And they're scared of it. They're like, no, 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 no. You can't use that. And Bitcoin, you know, obviously has become so centralized for a bunch of different reasons. But this is what's so exciting about what Richard Hart is building. And this is why I think $1.6 billion was sacked for it. One, people, I think, at the at the core care about themselves and want to get rich, right? Yeah, this is the opportunity to get in early. Let's get rich. Hey, I, I'm, I'm one of those people. But also, I recognize the fact that, hold on, if we're going to have any chance, if we're going to have any future where we actually have some semblance of independence and power, it's going to have to come from something that is operating outside of the controlling systems. And that's why the blockchain is a gift to me. And that's when I think about this. How low can you go? Well, in Davos, all the way to the bottom. How low can you go yourself when it comes to what you, how you see the world? How low can you go in hex price? And what lengths will you go to be successful? Will you step on other people's heads to get there? A lot of people would say, yeah. That does not create value in this future. Stepping on other people's heads to get yours is not the way it works. Why does Hex have value? It's because a group of people who understand what difficult times look like see an opportunity to have hope and confidence. And when that confidence gets rattled, they get scared, right? And of course, there's some really great OGs, right? They're like, yeah, man. Don't, don't, don't be, don't be worried, right? <sighs> Getting in prior to big payday. It's, it's still wonderfully up right now.
And then the people, of course, that got in and their buddies got them in at 45 cents are scared. I don't blame you. It's, it's legitimate. But I want you to understand what's bigger, what's happening here. This infrastructure, this vertically aligned ecosystem that Richard's building, he needs our support. And I was thinking about this question to ask Richard. What can we do to support you? Right? I'm not saying things aren't hard for you. But a lot of stuff is hinging upon the leadership of one man. And so on one hand, I look at this, I'm like, should I judge him? Right? Should I say, well, no. I mean, if I really believe in this libertarian paradise, which I do, this freedom to choose, I have to accept the whole thing with it. I have to accept it. It's what This is why it, it's called freedom of speech. It's why it's called freedom. Do what you want to do. Mind your own business. But our fates are intertwined. And I believe in this new infrastructure that is separate from um, the World Economic Forum and the Bond villains and Klaus Schwab. And I'm willing to stand arm to arm with you guys so that we can actually have a potential future in which we have the ability to choose. That's the stuff. So if I were giving advice to Richard Hart, which I would say exactly what he would say. He would say, yeah, I don't work for you. But you know what? We're friends, right? We're friends in Hex. We can give some advice, right? Here's my advice. Tell us the story about how you free the captives. How your layer one with a store of value, with a DEX, with the greatest tokenomics. Tell us about the wallet and how that works with fees and how that is incredible opportunity. Tell us about fiat on ramps and no KYC. Tell us about tornado cash, right? And how we're going to fit all those things together. And then the, tell us about a stable coin. Tell us about what our means of exchange is and tell us what that means for the future of our health, our wealth, our prosperity, our freedom, our sovereignty, or independence. That's powerful stuff. Way beyond Lambos. But that's just my advice. And what's it worth? Nothing. However, I will say this. We also have to recognize the fact that there is a brand being built. The most confident, uh, yeah, the most controversial man in crypto, right? That's, that's a, I mean, that's a white hot. And it's got a movie that's going to be incredible, right? This is going to be incredible. And it's going to be, it, it's really, it's playing to what the kind of Hollywood types want to see, right? They want to see just the extremes. I, I was, um, I helped produce a pilot for a reality television show. And it was about a family um, that were actually in the jewelry business. It's a pretty cool story in a cool community. Well, the people that I worked with who were filming this wanted to create drama because I, I, you know, I thought the craftsmanship of this is incredible, but they wanted to see people fighting. That just goes to show you what people think is a value, right? This extreme nature. Well, I mean, not that that, that, uh, that television show didn't get made. But, you know, you think about authenticity and then you think about utility. In the blockchain, people talk about utility being really important. What does utility mean? It's useful for something. Richard Hart's ecosystem has the greatest utility on planet Earth. And that's your personal sovereignty and freedom. It represents that. That's the utility. Incredible. And we have to understand that, but we need people to lead. We need vision. You know, and you think about this, it's like, why does leadership matter? You think about this. It's not easy to keep a group of people together, right? It's not easy. And, you know, I think back to Richard Hart's original commentary, him and his top hat. Remember that? Telling us how to apologize. Telling us how to have better relationships. Tell us how to do it right. I think we need some more of that because in my opinion, if the leadership is done right, 
is probably one of the most significant things that had happened in this century because it's ultimately going to be a battle between good and evil. And you're going to find yourself in an abundance and we're going to have all kinds of people that are suffering around us. And we're going to, we're going to look at this and go, what good's the money when I don't have anyone to play with, right? When things are terrible and it's just getting started, folks. This is this season of unrest, but who's going to build the new future? Who's going to stabilize this stuff? Who's going to return us to sanity? It's you. It's me. It's the people that find themselves without having to dig ditches so that we can actually contribute in a way that builds people up and helps those that are less fortunate but gives people opportunities. And I see this as the greatest thing that's ever happened in my lifetime as an opportunity. But you got to understand what's at stake. You got to understand how big this is. And you got to understand that it's not just about price. Is it important? Yes. Do we want it to be successful? Yes. Absolutely. But this is way bigger. Davos, Bond villains, CBDCs, the godless. People who believe that this is all there is. So might as well drink and be merry. Because, hey, when you're, when you're dead, you're gone. That's what they think, right? Because you used to be a monkey. And before that, you were an amoeba. And you crawled out of the ooze. Started using your opposable thumbs. And then you were a hunter-gatherer. And then next thing you know, you could code Python. And we have AI. But for those of us who understand that the future is way bigger. And that there's something beyond this. You realize... You've been created for a purpose and you have a responsibility and you have value. And we need to treat each other because we have value. We do not need to divide and conquer. We need to come together in unity. We need to support each other, even if we don't agree. Because our fates are intertwined. How low can you go? I want to go up, not down. And this is the most amazing community I've ever been a part of. And to me, the fact that we get to win together is huge. But we got to stick together to win together.